Hello everyone, Tim McKeska here with McKeska Brands Texas Barbecue. I wanted to do a video on leaf lard. Leaf lard is the leaf fat that comes off of the pig around its kidney. Sometimes it's called kidney fat. In beef cattle, this would be the suet of, uh, of in beef cattle that hangs around the, uh, the tenderloin, the interior part of the belly and, uh, and around the kidney. Uh, so I wanted to show you this video. Uh, this is me removing. I'm, first of all, I'm cutting some of the bacon, uh, some of the, uh, the belly off the leg there to get uh, access to this tenderloin. I am removing the tenderloin first. Uh, it's easier to remove the leaf lard if you remove the tenderloin first. And if you're not a butcher, uh, I don't recommend you doing this, uh, uh, you know, unless you've got some experience in, in deer processing. Uh, but the, uh, the Canadian bacon or the uh, pork tenderloin is a very valuable piece of meat, so you need to be careful with this. Uh, you know, normally I could pull this out in about six seconds, but we we want to take our time on valuable cuts, and the tenderloin is a valuable cut. On that tenderloin, there will, we leave the kidney on it when we're processing, and th once it uh, gets to the drying stage, I think this this pig hung for about five or six days, and it's easier to remove uh, the leaf fat when it has it has aged a little bit on the kidney and and on the tenderloin. So there, I will take the, the, uh, the tenderloin right off, and then I will pull the kidney fat. Now, I'm not going to get into details about the nutritional value of leaf lard. I don't want to be responsible for that for you. I think you need to be responsible for yourself and find out by Googling and doing some studies on it. I have, and it's the, the lard that I'm going to be using is this. As you can see there, there is the kidney that, I, that I'm pulling off of the, uh, the tenderloin, and uh, that fat there. Uh, is, is the leaf fat. But again, I want you to determine yourself. What I have determined is very interesting. Lard is making a comeback. You know, for years we were told, you know, stay away from butter and lards, and we went to all these crazy margarines and oils and things, but uh, it's making a comeback because studies have proven that it's, that it's not as bad as they say it is, and in many ways it's better. It is low in omega-6 fatty acids, the kind of acid you don't need, and it is high in omega-3 fatty acids, the kind of fatty acids you do need. And there you can see that's the leaf lard from the kidney there. Uh, and you can see it has a different texture to it because back fat you couldn't do that with. Again, it is like suet from beef cattle, the rich suet type fat that hangs around the kidney. So, uh, you know, I don't want to get into details about how good it is. I think you should just study that yourself. But there's been so many studies done on it. There's tons of information on the internet about leaf lard. And I think you should find out for yourself. I know this is what I'm going to be doing because tonight uh, my cousin Mike and Joe Beth cooked some amazing fried chicken using this, uh, this leaf lard. And then I, I, I used some cracklings for something else. But anyway, there's the kidney and then there's the leaf lard off of the pig. Now once you have the leaf lard separated, you need to go through it and make sure uh, there is no meat. There's a little piece of kidney that was left on another uh, part of a leaf lard that I pulled. And you need to take out any small pieces of meat that are still attached, anything that's red that's still associated with the pork. You need to get that out of there. Uh, it will render uh, a cleaner leaf lard if that is out. So anyway, you're going to remove all that. Now, uh, we're going to grind this and look at how pretty that, that fat is, that particular uh, leaf fat and how, how white and, and beautiful that is. Now, if you don't have a grinder, you can cut it into small bits and then uh, render it that way, but we have a grinder and uh, it just seems to be much easier to break it down into a rendering state when you have it ground. Now, we use a hamburger plate, a very fine plate uh, to grind this leaf lard with. And you will see immediately how smooth and, and creamy white it looks. Uh, you know, lard's been around a long time and uh, our grandparents, that's all they used. In fact, uh, interesting, my grandmother, uh, when I found uh, the recipe for her kolaches, one of the things it had that we had to translate it, we didn't understand this particular word, is that they used uh, lard from guinea fat. Uh, she had a lot of guinea birds uh, around her farm at that time, all the time. And that's one of the things they used to render for, for fat, or for, for lard, was guinea fat. And again, lard was used just about for everything else that was necessary. Uh, now, you're going to double boil this. Uh, you need to set up a double boiler where you've got a large pot with water with a smaller pot inside with the leaf lard inside that. That's a slow cooking method. Uh, you could also use a crock pot. 
Some people will put it directly over a burner, but I don't suggest that because it can burn. Um, and in those people that want cracklings, you're going to get cracklings a different way, and I'll show you how to get that. But look at that, how it's starting to break down. Uh, and as it begins to render, of course, it starts turning into a liquid. Now you're going to take the, the pieces of, this is cracklings basically, what does not render in these pieces, you're going to put in a frying pan, you're going to fry it. And, you know, th this was amazingly good. Uh, and you can see it popping. You have to be careful with this. It'll get in your eye. It'll, it's pretty explosive. But I used this tonight on a baked potato, and it was wonderful. Uh, I was very curious to see how it was going to taste. I've eaten cracklings before, but not specific leaf cracklings. I've heard about it, and other chefs have told me that that is the best very big in Europe in on salads and potatoes and vegetable dishes, uh, leaf, la leaf lard cracklings. But this was actually my first time to have it on a baked potato tonight, and it was very, very good. And so you'll see I'm using a, a, a very fine strainer there to, uh, to remove any of the oil lard that was still liquefied on the cracklings. And then I will put that on another uh, grate with paper underneath it to, to keep from making a big mess and after you shake it dry you'll dry them out on this uh, particular grate in that pan and they were really really good now this will have a very strong pork flavor and what you're trying to do in this is you're trying to remove that pork flavor from that lard and this is how you do it after you remove those cracklings out and fry them up you could throw them away if you want to but I wouldn't now here's the process of straining I strained this three times. The first one with a single fold cheesecloth. Then I did it through a double fold cheesecloth with a strainer. And then I did it a final time with a triple fold cheesecloth through the strainer. And each time I did it, it became more white and clear. And the particles that were left in the cheesecloth, I discarded. And when I went to my third and, and this is the, the third filtering, uh, there was nothing in the cheesecloth. All the particles have, were removed. And that is important to keep the flavor of that pork out. If you're making pastries, you obviously don't want a pastry that's going to taste like pork. And that's what leaf lard is meant for. It's meant to, to have those flaky pastries and without that pork flavor. If you're making it out of back fat and your standard pork uh, lard, it would have tons of that in, flavor in there and you don't want that. Then after you've uh, gone through this three stage of filtering, it's ready to put in jars. And again, you know, I, I wanted it in smaller jars, that way I could, uh, you know, use it in smaller quantities. Here's the thing, this is naturally organic, okay, there is nothing added, this is as natural as it comes. So it has a lifespan of about 30 to 45 days refrigerated, but then it needs to be frozen and after it's frozen it can be used indefinitely that way uh, and pulled as needed. Uh, what's important is when you finish this is to uh, label the, the cans or the jars with the date on them so you'll know exactly when it was made. And that's what it made. There's the, uh, the leaf lard with the, uh, the dates on it and the crackling bags uh, that it rendered for that much leaf lard and I was surprised with how much it made. It was a long process. This took about six and a half hours to do. Uh, I know it sounds long, but it's worth it. And that's why this stuff is about $2 an ounce. Uh, when you go to farmer's markets and, and places that, that do have leaf lard, it's, it's not cheap, it's expensive. So anyway, that's, that's leaf lard. And I wanna show you how it rendered after it sat up for 24 hours. And you can see it's starting to get a little wider there about an hour or two, and then this is the next day. Look at that. Is that not amazing? It was creamy, it was beautiful, and again, we had some amazing fried chicken with that tonight. I'm Tim McKeska with McKeska Brands, Texas Barbecue. You can visit me at www.mckeskabrands.com or at V Bar Ranch at www.huntingtexastrophies.com. Thanks.